Hi, I'm Keelish, and you're watching Coffee and Clicks. If you enjoy my content, please like and subscribe, and click on the link tree for more links to my media. Thank you for watching, and don't forget, wake up and smell the clicks. Hi, I'm Tealish, and you're watching Coffee and Clicks. Um, today, we're going to be talking about the rules changes and um, other topics, especially Future Foundation. And um, we're joined by Brad Broyles from the Bradcast Show. Hello. And also Matt Russo, who is a new player. Um, and uh, he's only been playing since like May of uh, 2020. So um, we're going to try to get a new, newer player's perspective on the game and all these rules changes that are coming up. So... Um, you know, how's everybody doing? Good, good. It's it's pretty good snowing. So yeah, it is snowing. And so, I mean, today is the uh, Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, uh, for us, it's the Snow Per Bowl. But I don't know. I don't know. What, it's not, it's not, it won't be snowing in the actual Super Bowl, right? When it, where is it being played? No, I think they said rain. I think they said it rain. might rain a little bit. So it's in we, Tampa. It's in Tampa. Okay. So let, let's jump into these um, rules changes and talk about them. A little bit. Oh, well, first of all, I wanted to give a shout out to Brad because uh, Brad um, has helped me with my um, my charity tournament, the the Coffee and Clicks Classic Epilepsy Foundation charity tournament that's going on. They're heading into the finals now. Um, this next week should be the final match of that tournament. It is uh, C U R Pauper, which means basically the Pauper Circuit rules, but including rares. And uh, it's been a really good tournament so far. Um, uh, everybody's had a lot of fun with it. And Brad designed the backgrounds for my uh, my Roll20 um, rooms. I'll show you them, show everybody them. So there's an example of one of Brad's creations. Um, that is Thanos holding a coffee cup. So <laughs> uh, really cool. Um, he's, he's got a bunch of other ones too that he sent me. He, he, he designs these uh, Roll20 backdrops, um, and uh, they're really fun to use. So um, thank you, Brad, for that. And also, he's also been really good at being an observer whenever anybody needs one in the tournament. So he's been really active in helping out with the tournament. So thank you for that. Sure. Uh, and um, all right, so let's talk about the rules changes. So, I mean, uh, Matt, you're a new, newer player. How, how long have you been playing since? Uh... May. May or June, we played once or twice. Um, and then we really started playing when the Absolute Carnage set came out. That's when I, I was playing with you and Joe once or once or twice, maybe three times a week we were playing when the Absolute Carnage came out. Because that set was, I was like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, so, I mean, is that your favorite set so far that has come out? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I, know, I know you've also been playing with Captain America and the Avengers and also Fantastic Four mm -hmm. pieces, but your favorite so far is the Spider-Man mm -hmm. Carnage. Yeah, I, I think because I got Absorbing Man, no no offense to him, but I just didn't, that, that set didn't really do it for me. Um, a, it is a great set, though. It is, Captain America and the Avengers is a really fun, yeah. great set. It, it has good pieces. I mean, I got Captain Marvel out of that, but I got Absorbing Man, so... <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, Absorbing Man has gotten better with the new rules changes. Uh, yeah. So uh, he hits a little bit harder, and uh, that's uh, when uh, when when it comes to uh, hero clicks and for new players, it's all about clicking. Uh, no, no kind of no kind of tenders, but it's all about clicking with the stuff that makes you really want to play the game. Yeah. And uh, Captain America might not have done it for you, but. Uh, uh, there's a lot of really good sets on there from from my perspective from the team building aspect 
that was that was the hardest part for me was trying to build teams um and, and tony can tell you about that is that i was like all right and he goes well you don't have this what about this what about this and i was like wow all right so i'm still having problems with teams but for his tournament i i was like oh, i want a cosmic team i'm like all right so let me try to put this together and he goes you know, you kind of have it you're just missing the one thing but it shouldn't be that that bad so it takes a little while to get used to seeing how different sets and teams will work together but it's it seems to be coming along and so what's your opinion on the new rules change that there's now no pushing damage in on the figures so now with a figure that maybe had the shield without the line through it now that now all figures are going to have the shield with the line through it, the indomitable symbol. And um, all figures, you'll be able to go, you'll be able to give two costed actions before you clear. Yeah. To me, I, I don't, well, the first couple of times I played, I forgot about that. I thought that everyone just gets two moves. Um, but I don't like that because there's a reason why those characters were able to do the two. And to me, it was like, that's why you pick that character is so they can move the twice. And now you're giving it to everybody. That's not, that might hurt some characters. What do you think, Brad? Uh, I have got to put up new rules changes yet. And uh, uh, for new sets, it should be fine. For older sets, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, now uh, bloated point cost. Uh, because that's part of uh, there's a game design that comes with each piece. Uh, sometimes it doesn't make sense with their overall game design for each figure, but uh, I think it'll be better for the game. Uh, I've been paying attention to uh, what a lot of people have been saying, and I have been trying out the new rules with uh, each rollout of the article that comes out. And people say that uh, they're dusting off old figures that they normally wouldn't want to use, uh, but now have the ability to not have to worry about pushing damage because they are really good on a certain clip. Um, but uh, with uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the changes just because uh, I, I like uh, challenges that come with uh, each new set, uh, each rules, or each clarification or vada. It's uh, but some of them are frustrating. Uh, the push damage, uh, like uh, Immortal Hulk from the Captain America set. Uh, but they issued an errata for that, where it's now an activation click on click one. Uh, so I think uh, there's going to be some figures, especially in modern, most kids will take a look at to help make sure that they're not neutered too much. Uh, most kids is pretty good about listening uh, to the overall voice of the uh, community. So if you have a, an idea or a suggestion, you should definitely email them uh, or message them on Facebook. Yeah, WizKids is very good about listening to the, the clicks community. That is definitely true. I've noticed that over, over my years playing. And also, um, I mean, I, I, I get what they're doing with pushing damage because they're trying to make the game faster. I mean, and I've, I've heard other people that have play tested it. Um, with without pushing damage and the games go faster the turns go faster um, there's less decision making um, and so um, you can just go boom 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 and, and kind of um, play the game at a at a at a faster rate which which means less stalling and more actual playing but um but I see I see both points because it also makes the game a little bit um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, taking away decision making, um, it, it's kind of hard to, to to decide whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. But I think I think overall, it's a good thing. Uh, one thing is uh, that is hard for any player, uh, new or old, is trying to wrap their mind around uh, new rules when you've already you know, committed to learning something previously before. Yeah. And, um, uh, go ahead. No, I mean, I think you're right. I think, uh, like, Matt, um, being a new player, um, like, Matt, Matt, you can attest to this. Um, do you think that it, you just starting to learn um, a few months ago, now do you think you're going to have to relearn everything again? Is it? I don't, I don't, because I, I feel 
like with the new rule, like they're ge more geared towards new players. And I, and I feel like there were so many rules that, that I was like, I know that one rule has to deal with like telekinesis and stuff. I wasn't really using that anyway. Right. So I was like, well, oh, all right. So I can just forget something that I didn't really follow. <laughs> Yeah, so, and actually, that's what they said in, in the article about telekinesis was they said that most people use it for this and this. So that's what we're going to keep. And the, the parts that that people don't really use yeah. that much, they're going to get rid the, of. The other like the only one that that I saw that raised my eyebrow was with the hindering. So we're going to talk about we're going to talk about that. But first, that was the only one that I was like, I think that would affect the way I play. The other ones I was kind of like. I, I kind of need like a simple explanation of it because like I'm trying mean? to read it and I'm like, all right, what are they trying to say here? And then I was, so when you were explaining it to me, I was like, oh, that doesn't seem so bad. That doesn't mm -hmm. seem so bad. Well, by the way, um, I forgot to mention Matt Russo is part, a member of the newly formed Cobra Clicks team. And um, Brad, are you on a, um, on a, on a Hero Clicks team? I am. Uh, I'm part of the Uncanny Clicksman. Oh, the Uncanny yeah. Clicksman. Okay, with um, with Julio and Esteban, right? Yeah, Julio, yeah. Esteban, national champion, uh, Dustin Cedars. Oh. Uh, yeah, he's a two-time national champion, actually, one with uh, singles and uh, teams. Nice, nice, awesome. And you guys are from you guys are from Texas, right? Or... Yeah, most of us are based out of Texas. Uh, some have moved over to the East Coast. Uh, we have a couple over Oklahoma and Colorado. Awesome. So, um, what is your opinion on benching powers for the Wonder Woman set? Uh, overall, uh, I don't like it, but I can understand from a, a design perspective. Uh, I think that it uh, will push sales and uh, uh, the, the need to uh, go to after certain sets. And uh, Pulse Wave, for one, is a uh, really great power. And same with Perplex. If they're, ban uh, if they're benching certain powers and new players are jumping into a brand new set, um, uh, they have no idea what uh, Pulse Wave is, what Perplex is, or what uh, Willpower is. Um, uh, it's uh, it could be confusing uh, when starting for your first game, and you have to stop what you're doing and grab the pack and uh, have to explain. Uh, I don't think uh, any sets should be bent or any power should be benched. I think maybe you can like reel them back, and they would not introduce them as much. But uh, I think that there should be uh, at least uh, each power should be presented in an organic way, as opposed to just holding on to it. Uh, just to keep it from uh, being played. That's an interesting point. Um, that's, a, that's a good point. And I was thinking, like, you know, I do remember, though, with Pulse Wave, when I, was, when I first started, I had no idea what Pulse Wave did. And I would have to look it up many times. And then when people used it on me, I just got crushed because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a type of power that, you know, the, the, the experienced players take advantage of more than the... Um, beginners players because uh, uh, I got I got rocked in your tournament by Pulse Wave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Pulse Wave is a great power, and it is confusing for new players. Uh, uh, so it, it's not uh, I'm okay with you benching it, but uh, for the most part, I just uh, would like to make sure that uh, new players uh, are at a disadvantage from uh, being for having these powers benched. Yeah. I mean, maybe in maybe once they re once they are re reintroduced, they would be at a disadvantage, uh, right? Because uh, they wouldn't know what they do. Uh, some people are speculating that the reason that they're benching these powers is because we're going to uh, arrive at them to something different in the future. So that's the reason why they're taking away for the set. And uh, once that, uh, people get comfortable with these new rules they'll roll them out and introduce uh, maybe a better streamlined version of the power, like a TK or close combat expert, range combat expert. Yeah, I, I was using range combat expert a lot. Yeah, it's good like, power. Like I knew, like I knew like with the pulse wave and stuff, I was like, I understand what they're doing because I would do this. Like I would see pulse wave and I'm like, I really don't know how that works. So I just wouldn't use that character. 
and I would use ones with the powers because I didn't do the right thing. I didn't start with a starter set. I played one game with a starter set and I'm like, I'm ready, full set. <laughs> and I was, I'm like, all right, so I just won't use characters I don't know the powers of. So I, I feel like I understand what they're doing because I am one of the new players. But like, let's get rid of some of the more like tougher ones to figure out. And then like you said, ex eventually expand it out. So what do you guys think about the close combat expert and range combat expert changes and also the change to perplex? All right, why don't you just say what the change is? And... Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll uh, go over it again. So um, close combat expert and range combat expert. Um, previously, you had, to, you had a choice between plus two to attack, plus two to damage, or plus one and plus one. And also it was a power action which means it could not be combined with running shot or charge or anything like that. Definitely not hypersonic. So now the way they changed it um, was that it now it's an always on power. You don't, it's not, it's not activated by a power action. It's just always on, which means it combos with literally everything um, because you, it's always on, but there's no decision-making that you have to do. It's always just plus one attack plus one damage. And for close combat expert, it's for close attacks. And for range combat expert, it's for range attacks. So it's always plus one, plus one. And uh, it it combos. I mean, it, it does. I mean, it just combos with everything because it's just a, it's just a flat modifier um, to your stats. It's it's always on. So See, I mean, what do you think about that change? For me, I. I... I, I like it because then I don't have to like shoot. But if I see a character that has like, let's, I think it's toughness or a or damage reducer, I want to be able to bump up my my damage to counteract that. And now they're not giving me the choice to do that. I, I don't I don't like that because now some of the characters you're gonna be like, well, why would I even bother attacking him if if it's just gonna everything's gonna drop down. Um, well, you know what, you know what, actually, and uh, um, this, but I'll get, um, I want to ask your opinion too, Brad, but um, perplex also, they took away the ability to perplex damage. So now perplex, you can only perplex the other combat values besides damage. So there's going to be a lot more chipping away at characters instead of just one shotting characters, which is, I think what they were going for, because it feels bad when you get one shot. <laughs> oh, it does. <laughs> feels bad thing that they that they've been they've been trying to avoid anything that feels bad and they're, they're they're trying to um get it so that so that um the game is more accessible for new players right i just think like what i was saying with like those damage reducers like i would like putting up my damage to counteract it so you still can take let's say three damage instead of oh that's only one uh well you still can it's just that now you have to get a little more creative. Uh, you have to either do dice manipulation uh, to do uh, critical hits, uh, or you have to design with uh, empower or enhancement or the shield team ability uh, to help buff up that damage. So uh, again, I don't like the change either because uh, I like to think of things from a uh, statistical perspective uh, 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 perspective, and uh, I like taking risks. I like being able to increase my attack or increase my damage by two, uh, because I think that the, the risk is worth the reward, uh, or I don't want to take the risk so much. Uh, I'd rather be able to be sure I, I hit instead. So uh, it's, a, it's a mixed bag. Now I can use it with a running shot and charge, or a flurry is a big one. Uh, that's uh, another power. I think uh, that's one of my favorite powers is flurry. Uh, so uh, it, in a way, it does speed up the game because it takes away a little bit of the decision making process. And but uh, I think it balances out with making the game last a little bit longer because, like Tony said, the uh, you, you chip away instead of one shotting. Uh, and I think people just want to be able to play the game. Uh, you know, when you build a team, you go to the tournament and. You just won't be able to play your team, uh, at least in the, in, the, in the way that you designed it. And sometimes when you play against certain opponents, you never really get the opportunity. Yeah, I mean, if they blow you out of the water, one-shotting your, your main attacker, second turn, you know, you're kind of 
left feeling defeated because now you built this whole team and you wanted to do something and now you can't you had a plan of how this team was going to work and now it kind of just got shot down right away yeah uh, from a, a designer perspective, what they're trying to do, I feel like, is make it uh, level the playing field a little bit. So uh, those powers that you were trying to skip out on, uh, it's not as punishing anymore to skip out on Pulse Wave or uh, have seven complexes on your team or uh, TK. Uh, TK is a power that I... I try to utilize all aspects of it. I don't just use it for placing. Uh, I uh, I built and I uh, when I, uh, I built kind of like Dan Powell does, who's also a world champion and black champion. Uh, I built from a, a way where any piece that makes it to my team uh, doesn't just get utilized for that one power. I uh, I want them in the fight if uh, if I have the access for it. I uh, I try to build with light objects or heavy objects if they if they can use it. Uh, I I'm always thinking about every single point that goes onto my team, uh, and that's uh, on the main forest and also on the sideline as well as my map. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, what they can uh, bring to the fight uh, because uh, I think in a very meta way but not so much as like uh, I want to be people but from the actual meta term most efficient uh, I forget what the uh, the TA stands for but but the most efficient way to spend your points and uh, sometimes that, that is the most meta overused pieces out there but uh, other times it's just this piece works better and I'd rather spend my points uh, this way instead yeah I mean, Matt, I think you remember we had a game where you built with Red Goblin. You were really excited to use Red Goblin. I, I, I do remember that. You remember that game? <laughs> and I, I, I came that. out and I one-shotted Red Goblin. You're like, you're like, screw this. Like, I... <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, that was that was fun. <laughs> yeah, no, because I watched a video and the one guy was like, oh, this is a really cool team to build around Red Goblin. And I was like, I'll give it a try. And so exactly what he was talking about, I move in. I missed a hit. I missed I missed my shot and it was literally sitting there and you just were like good night. <laughs> that's the thing they're trying to avoid. That's why they're changing. That's that's part of why they're changing stuff. Yeah, but, but you know I knew I took that risk. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, I didn't plan on missing. <laughs> um, but okay, so the next thing on the list here is uh, theme teams. What do you guys think about theme? The, so the change between the change of theme teams was. Um, that uh, all all theme teams get theme team probs, even if you're a named or generic theme team, you still get theme team probs. You can have a one character theme team, which will get a theme team prob, um, and also uh, the map bonus for map roll is um, a maximum of three higher than your opponent. Um, so there's that, and. Theme probs. When you're using theme probs, you don't token them, and they can and they can theme prob themselves. So a character can theme prob itself, and you don't have to use a token to theme prob. It's just range, range and line of fire. So uh, and as long as they share the keyword with the theme team. So, I mean, those are the, those are the changes to theme teams and theme probs. What do you, what do you think about that, Brad? What do you think about that? Uh, I, I I like some of the changes. I, I... Uh, and I hate some changes. I keep going back and forth. Uh, with uh, all the rules changes, there's really not one that's like, man, that's really bad. The only one I really didn't like was fetching powers. But for everything else, though, I'm trying to uh, be understanding. Uh, when it comes to theme teams, uh, I like that there's a cap now uh, because it goes uh, back to that feels bad where you build like this really cool uh, uh, Red Goblin team, uh, but you uh, only have like a plus three or a plus four because you know he's uh, he's worth the points, uh, or he may not be worth the points in some people's eyes, but in uh, Matt's eyes, he's uh, absolutely worth the points that I built around them. And uh, this is the the best build that can be worked with uh, Red Goblin. And then you play against uh, uh, a Barkley team. 
which has like a plus 11 to a plus 15, or you play against a Justice League team that has a plus a, a 10 to a plus 14. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, you, you're, the, the, the choice is no longer yours uh, when it comes to picking a map or being able to uh, play uh, before the game even starts. Uh, and when it comes to team team props, I, uh, I like it uh, because that's, uh, again, taking away the decision-making process. It's no longer having to worry about should I or should I not give an action token. It's not just, do I want to save this prop? Uh, and uh, sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. But uh, when it comes to uh, overall, I think it will help speed up the game. And I think people will feel a little less bad about giving out uh, uh, using up their theme team props. Uh, some people also feel like uh, it takes away some of the, uh, what do you call it, the uh, building process. Uh, now, now, now there's no incentive to build as a plus 13 uh, theme team because now I'm capped at three. So now I can play as team and get a chance of building that. I think that's great uh, because now there's a better chance to see a variety of team builds instead of only trying to have this arms race of uh, I need to get a high build so I can get maps so I can do this and then I can one shot that red goblin and now it's uh, down here where I, uh, Matt has a chance to actually build and have a shot at getting map and doing what he wants to do and that makes the uh, the Barkley teams and the Batman teams feel bad, but uh, those uh, those players that are built in that way are not new players. They're players that have invested time and invested money, and that's where some people aren't liking that change because they invested so much. But uh, Hero Clicks needs new players and needs to grow. Uh, and, uh, yeah. I also think that actually it doesn't hurt i think there still is an incentive to build big teams with a lot of characters i think there still is an incentive i mean plus three is a lot i mean uh, plus three is a lot and you still have uh inside the game itself you still have actions uh you still have uh, most people build with leadership and most people have autonomous so if when you're building uh with that you still have stuff inside the game to where you can still be overwhelming uh, to an opponent's force. Uh, you just, uh, you, your advantage for map is lessened. Yeah, I mean, and keep in mind it's plus three over your opponent. So, yeah. I mean, if you're, if, if, I'm a, if I'm a plus nine and you're a plus eight, I still get a plus one to my map roll. Um, As someone who's been on the receiving end, I remember in our league play, I lost, I lost the map roll and I just, and they picked that one crazy map. I forgot which one it was, but that one map, I was just like, there's nothing I can, my team is now sunk. Well, like, uh, right uh, Matt, I don't know if, if you know this, but there's also kind of a controversy over um, map design and whether they, you know, how balanced the maps that they make are, like certain maps, um, whether they're kind of like oppressive, like totally dominating maps, certain maps. Um, but they're trying to balance it out. I think they're trying to make maps that are more balanced. So, but there are some maps that are like go-to maps that people use. Yeah, I, I, that one. That one map. Uh, it was like the Air Gardens or something like that. Uh, probably Hedgemaze. Was that like a lot of blocking terrain? No, it was like a lot of float. Like it was floating. Like it was like supposed to be like up in the air and it just ruined my team like wrecked my team i was like i can't do anything with this map <laughs> i'm in i'm in trouble and yeah. so I, I understood what they were saying when they described it they're like the map roll shouldn't cost you a game yeah uh, i get well, that i get why they're doing that for sure uh yeah uh, when it comes to uh, the the map some people build four maps because it could be so aggressive uh and uh, it shouldn't ruin your chance to play the game uh, and I'm hoping WizKids uh, and Rock and Majestics are listening to the community. As fun as it is to put people on certain maps and ruin their day, uh, 
you might discourage that player from playing again in the future or playing against you. And I don't think anybody wants that. I think everybody wants to be able to play the game in any sense of the word, uh, in any kind of game. And to discourage people uh, for a team build or a map is uh, not what anybody wants. I, feel, I, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt and think positively for the most part. I, uh, so yeah, Matt, I understand. I also think I also think that it's fun to choose the map because especially in casual play, like uh, you know, you want to have you want to have go to certain different locations when you're in battle, and you want to have different like choices as far as like what map you're using. Um, and, you know, even when you go to like a sealed tournament, your local game store or something, you know, you bring certain maps. Um, well, that's different because n normally people don't have like huge um, map rolls at a sealed tournament. But I mean, in constructed play, you you know, it's fun. Even even in constructed play, it's fun to choose the map. And I don't think that uh, it's really that fair to have one person with their plus twelve theme team always win map every single every single mm -hmm. game that they play. <laughs> like there should be like a kind of a sixty forty chance, I guess, that is what they that they made it right. Like yeah, and like you said, plus three is still a lot. It is. It's a lot. So I, I mean, uh, but you, at least it gives you a chance to win it. Like when you, when I'm facing a plus thirteen, I'm like, there's zero chance I can get this. And I, I think uh, with that plus three, you're going to see changes on those uh, Barkley builds, the scientists, or those plus eleven and thirteens. Uh, I don't think, uh, for the most part, those piece, those teams will be played like like that anymore. Instead, I think they'll again try to build in, a, in a, an efficient way to to go with the map rule. Well, yeah, this nerfs like uh, Batman Prime a lot because yeah, if he goes on a blocking map, it's very hard for him to succeed on a blocking on a map yeah. with blocking. Uh, you, you can look at it from a, a nerfing aspect of, of it, or you can uh, also look at it as, okay, now I don't need to worry about one of the map. Now I need to worry about uh, positioning him uh, to make him mobile because he's still a very good piece for what he does. But now you have to use TK, you have to use a, a taxi or someone with a flight or a giant size to be able to move Batman around. Or uh, if, uh, if you really wanted to, you could also use uh, vehicles. Uh, there's uh, the, the Thanos copter, there's the, uh, the bat, uh, the, what, what do you call it? The Batman car, I forget what it's called. Uh, but yeah, Batman can now become a vehicle, and that 12 attack is pretty good uh, to put inside of a vehicle. Yeah, I mean, you got to get you're gonna have to get creative and figure out yeah. what you're gonna do if you lose map instead of just planning to win map all the time. So, I, mean, I guess the good players always just figure out what they're gonna do if they lose map anyway, but now it's more of a greater chance, yeah. And that's uh, that's a good thing, I think, uh, because uh. Uh, I think it's really awesome when uh, I can go out there and beat one of those really good players. Uh, I, I I struggle a lot. I get what's uh, a gridlock in my brain because of the intimidation factor, or uh, they're just a, either from the player or from the team, you know. And so, uh, with uh, what Whiskers is doing is trying to. You know, help uh, those new players out because I don't know if you recognize any of those names that I've said, Matt. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the uh, one because I enjoy his map of the farm. Oh, Powell, oh uh, Powell Dan Powell. Powell. Yeah, Powell Farm. Yeah, that's a good map. It's a fun map and it should be used more. Yeah, I like. I usually like for fun play. I like maps that have a little bit of everything in it, like a little bit of elevated, a little bit of hindering, a little bit of. Um, even obscuring um, a little bit of walls, a little bit of any water, you know, like Wakanda EarthX, great map, you know, like um, like maps that have a little bit of everything so that you can kind of maneuver around and, and experience. Uh, those are fun maps to me. Um, uh, I actually hate that map because there's so much going on that sometimes it's a little hard to move my team around, you know. But yeah, it's a good map from a design point. Uh, so, but that brings me to my next question. So, uh, hindering terrain. Uh, so, uh, so, um, well, the, the, that that rules change had a bunch of things um, coupled with it. So, first of all, uh, characters with multiple bolts now they not not only that can they multi multi attack from range, but they can also multi attack from close. 
So that was a change that was made to try to improve close attackers because the, the trend in the game is to try to make close attackers more powerful um, because range attackers right now kind of rule the roost and are, it's mostly about range attacks. So now they're trying to they're trying to give close attackers more power. So they, they allow them to make multiple attacks with if they have multiple bolts, which I think they're going to design more figures like that in the future. Um, they also took away knockback damage. So there's no knockback damage, as we know so far, because, I mean, don't forget, all of these rules changes are only based on what we know so far, and not, all of them have not come out yet. So we don't actually know what now, the rule book looks like or what the pack looks like. Now, just, yeah. a, just a quick question. If, if they hear enough, like, outrage on, let's say, benching powers, if enough people are like, no, 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 don't bench them, don't, if they hear it enough, could they change their mind on it before that set comes out? <laughs> I, uh, well, yeah, well, go ahead, uh, Brad. Uh, I was going to say, well, uh, uh, so to a certain point, yes and no. Uh, with Wonder Woman, that's already in production, so it's too uh, it's too late for that set. But uh, for the next sets and for future future designs, yeah, absolutely. In this case, we're like, okay, we don't like it, we're, we'll just totally skip out on it and stop doing that, or we'll uh, or we'll lessen, or we'll compromise on that idea. Yeah, um, I mean, I think. Uh... The most recent thing that I think WizKids really listened to the the uh, the players about was uh, Spider-Man 1776. I mean, I don't know if they, because <laughs> because literally everybody everybody in the community said this needs to be eroded and and uh, and um, and they hated on it. And I mean, I with good reason. And um, and so the watch list came out, and then they and then they waited a long time, and then they changed the watch list again, um, and they added him to it. And then when they finally came out with the results for the watch list, um, and they they really uh, they really nerfed uh, <laughs> Spider Man seventeen seventy six. I remember when the watch list came out because I didn't know it was coming out, and Tony just says, "Hey, some of the pieces you like are on a watch list," and I'm like, "Ooh, does that mean really good?" He goes, "No, that does not mean good." He goes, <laughs> "That means they're gonna pro they're gonna try to get rid of them or downgrade them a little bit." I was like, "No," <laughs> but um, so uh, um. Yeah, so there's no knockback damage, and uh, when you get knocked back, now it's a default of three squares. It used to be how much damage you take, so it used to be that if you took a damage, you were knocked back a square. If you took two damage, you were knocked back two squares, um, and so on and so on. But now, every time you get knocked back, it's it, the, the active player decides um, up to three squares pla placed in that direction. Um so that's kind of cool, I think. But also, there's no knockback damage. So if you get knocked back into a wall, nothing happens. You just stop. If you get knocked back off of elevated, as far as I know, nothing happens. You just stop and uh, don't take so any Why damage. even have knockback? So the knockback is for placement, and placement is actually very good in the game if you're placing yeah. opponent's figures. But I mean, I mean, so, yeah, so that's an interesting thing that you just said yeah. there, Matt. But... I mean, oh yeah, I agree, Matt. Why even have knock back? Uh, uh, it, it it's it's a fair question to ask, and I, I totally said it's a uh, placement. Uh, placement is huge in this game. Uh, one of my favorite pieces to play is Master of Magnetism by Magneto from the XDPS set, uh, where I can just ruin a leadership team by just placing one square away than their formation was intended. Uh, I am upset about knockback damage. I don't like that change uh, because uh, some pieces are built around doing knockback damage. Uh, it's and now that point cost is more than overcosted. It's uh, it's a huge nerf, and I don't like uh, tossing that one around uh, too often. Uh, but it it, it, uh, it hurts, and so uh, I hope whiz kids can. Uh, Listen, I maybe change that, but if not, uh, I'm, I'll just have to live with it. <laughs> yeah, I will miss knockback damage. I also enjoy knocking people back into walls. I think the power quake becomes a lot worse, but we also don't know if they're going to change that power. So not all the rules have come out yet, so we don't know. Um, but I mean, like if you're if you're using the quake common from Captain America and the Avengers, and you can do that pinpoint quake. I mean, one of the coolest things is to knock somebody back off off of a ledge or into a wall um, with Quake and deal that extra damage. But now you can't do that. So as the as the new player here, um, I, I feel like it's a little more forgiven if I make a mistake with placement 
that I'm not going to get hammered for it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, uh, I think I kind of feel like that's why they did it. Like, cause I remember when I first started, I was, I was like, I'm starting to pick up on it now. Like, oh, don't go near an edge because they can just knock you back to where, to, but I can understand why they were saying like, all right. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. And I'm, I think that's what they were going for. So that's really good. Um, and then the, the last change that they made was about hindering terrain. So now hindering terrain does not affect movement. Um, and I think that, I mean, as far as I know, that includes water terrain because water terrain is a subset of hindering terrain. So um, I think it's going to behave just like obscuring terrain. Um, they might even take obscuring terrain totally out. I don't know. That's just my speculation. Um, but uh, so basically hindering terrain improves um, your defense against range attacks by plus one. If you're standing in it, um, it also, um, you know, if you're stealth, you could still, you could still stealth in it, um, but you can still use stealth in the hindering terrain, but now you can move freely, freely through it. You don't have to stop and you don't have to half your movement coming out of hindering. Um, and I know, no, Matt, you said this earlier that you weren't crazy about this change. No, no, because if, if you're setting up, like when you pick a map or something, you're like, all right, I know his, his team and I want him to have to stop. Now it's like, why would I pick certain maps that have it? Because I want them to be a, like there has there should be a, a cost to going through certain things. And uh, Wakanda. I feel like it's hurting. Yeah, like the Wakanda map for sure. Brad, what do you think? Uh, I again, uh, it's a uh, uh, I, I like it. I don't like it. Um, I think it helps uh, minimize some of the confusion about having movement for. Uh, having movement for coming in out of moving through uh, hindering terrain. Uh, that's a, a calculation that not everybody's great at doing, especially with replace and modify, uh, because there's so many ways to perplex movement or uh, bump up movement. And uh, it's, uh, worst case is trying to streamline the game. And, uh, uh, the, the less words I do think, uh, the better. Uh, it's just a, a little contradicting uh, or counterintuitive to some of the pieces that they keep making. Uh, but maybe in the future future sets, we'll see uh, a simplification that will equal out to hopefully uh, new players and uh, networking of the game. Uh, I don't like uh, that they're taking away obscuring terrain, like Matt said, like what's the point of some maps now? Uh, but uh, if uh, that's the case. Um, uh, and I also think that hurts uh, water maps as well. Well, we don't know about obscuring terrain. We don't know what we're gonna what they're gonna do with that. They might they might change that to be something else. We don't know yet. I, I feel like they could have done this halfway, where they said, "Fine, we're gonna get rid of the half coming out, but when you hit it, you have to stop." Yeah, I, I would have been fine with that uh, because uh, smoke cloud is a power that is a lot, and there's a uh, uh, a chase from the Batman animated series set uh, where I would pick uh, Smoke Cloud with uh, Batman and, uh, out for the trouble alert and he was great with Smoke Cloud uh, it's a totally underutilized power and it can really ruin someone day to give them minus one to attack or to you know lay out a track of uh, Smoke Cloud markers to keep people from coming in while I'm trying to take care of this other threat. Um, speaking of the rules changes, uh, what is your favorite character to put uh, the power gem on now? <laughs> uh, the power gem? Uh, because now the power uh, gem gives close combat expert, range combat expert, and plus one damage. And then an extra damage if you roll a 10 or higher. So now those powers are always on, so they combo with pretty much anything. So um, it just it's going to give a character an auto plus two uh, damage and plus one attack to close, close or range. So there are so many characters that could utilize that really well. Um, uh, off the top of my head, uh, is Maggot. Uh, uh, that right now Maggot is a, a piece that's just good by itself, and uh, it's a uh, it's hard for me to try to improve upon it. And with a uh, close combat expert, now I don't have to worry about a power action. I can just get that static effect. And uh, if I eat one of the uh, 
melee or melee bystanders. Yeah, he's got basically plus two to uh, damage and uh, attack. So that's yep. only fifty points. For me, I would put it on. I would. I would put it on trader and then trade it with gardener, um, yep. because then, then gardener gets a plus one attack, um, plus one damage. Twelve for no, four. Plus two damage it would be twelve and five. Um, 12, 12 and five. Um, with that, and it's a free attack, and then he would get a twelve and five as a range attack on top of that. That would be pretty sick with with Gardner. <laughs> yeah, for only you know yeah. fifty five points. What about you, Matt? I, I think after after you said it with Gardner, I was thinking of my of his tournament team, and I was like, yeah, that I would put it on Gardner just to let him. Do with a free attack, like hey, look at look at how much extra free attack I can hit with now. And uh, you know, Gartner pairs up well with Marvella. Uh, you know, yesterday I did a tournament with uh, George Masu and he won with a Gartner double Marvella combo with a uh, double empower. Now with the uh, the close combat expert Stone, uh, he can hit for six damage instead of five. A lot of people are benefiting from this range attack, range combat expert and close combat expert change. Um, if you look at Magneto Danger Room construct, now he is he has he has penetrating psychic blast and range combat expert on his top dial. I mean he only deals one damage because he's a danger room construct construct, but now he's a thirteen attack, um, and he and it and it's also that also combos with Pensai, so he. Yeah. Uh, so now that uh, that one extra damage, you go over the top to deal the one extra damage. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of figures that are kind of like benefiting from these rules changes, but I think going forward they're going to balance it out as they uh, as they design new figures. But yeah, the hindering terrain. Um, you know, I, I I saw somebody on Facebook comment about this that, uh, um, and I want to know what you guys think about this. Um, Chess does not have any um, restrictions with terrain on it. The board, you know, you can move freely on the board, but there's still so many strategies you can use in chess that it doesn't really take away from the strategy. So, like, compared to Heroclix, um, taking away the, the ability to... The, the, take away Taking away the restriction of having to stop in hindering terrain um, doesn't take away from the strategy of the game. It, it actually, there's still plenty of strategy in the game. I mean, would you agree with that statement or? Well, semantics wise, no, because I mean, you, you literally say you're taking away something. Uh, Cause uh, it's uh, it's one less strategy to do. Uh, now for the overall spirit of the game. Yeah, no, it doesn't take anything away. Uh, there's still plenty of strategy to do with the game itself that, uh, one less thing doesn't necessarily hurt the game. It just hurts uh, some pieces and some maps. Okay. So, so here, uh, here's another topic. Um, Future Foundation. There were a couple of new game mechanics introduced um, that are kind of like rules changes. They're not really rules changes, but they're kind of like new game mechanics uh, that might be game changing. So uh, one of them is mission points. Uh, Matt, have you heard of mission points yet? Or... I heard him mention it, but I didn't hear what it does. So let me share like, my screen. It... Let me share my screen. I'll share you a figure that has mission points. We're going to look at Uatu, who's actually a really cool super rare. Yeah, okay, Scott Porter was really pumped about him. Yeah, he's yeah. good. He's very good. He's 30 points. And um, look at that range. Yeah, 12 range, 30 points. Jeez. He's got Cosmic Energy, which is the new Power Cosmic. So that's that's the team ability Power Cosmic, basically, is Comic Cosmic Energy. He's got uh, 12 movement with Phasing Teleport, 0 attack, 19 defense, which is really high with Invulnerable, um, 0 damage with Prob. So he's definitely a support piece. He's not really an attacker. Um, but 30 points for 5 clicks with Invulnerable and Power Cosmic. That's really good. Um, then... He has. Um, he's also a giant, which means he sees through elevated and hindering, um, and over blocking in out, outdoor tour, in uh, outdoor outdoor maps. He can see over over a lot of stuff because he's a giant. He's giant size, so that means he can prob from twelve squares away over 
many figures and stuff like that. So that's really good. Um, and then um, here's the here's the trait that is uh, has to do with mission points. I'm here to observe the important cosmic events that are about to unfold. Whenever a character within range uses probability control and the finalized result is different from the original result, for example, a result before any rerolls such as a miss becomes a hit or a successful breakaway becomes a failed breakaway, etc. So if you if you prob a hit into a miss or a miss into a hit or if you prob or if, or if your opponent probs a miss into a hit or a hit into a miss or if your opponent probs a breakaway roll and it, and it changes from success to failure, any anybody it could be you or your opponent any prob that changes the result after resolutions you gain one mission point and then um there are other characters in the in the set that also give mission points so you can pair them together and if you get to 20 mission points before your opponent you win so it has yeah. nothing it has nothing to do with scoring po it's an alternate win condition so it has nothing to do with KOing your opponent's figures or anything like that. It's an alternate. People can design teams around mission points and try to win that way. I'm sure they're already thinking of it. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if you have a, a lot to say about this, Samantha. but I got, I got some stuff to say about this for sure. Or what do you think? What, what, what do you, what do you have to say, Brad? Brad? Uh, for me, myself, uh, mission points, it's a great mechanic. Uh, I also hate it uh, <laughs> because uh, now uh, it's, uh, if I don't build a certain way or I'm not prepared for it, I could get really surprised by someone that built for it on their team and uh, I could get shut out in a way uh, because uh, Earlier, when you were going over the types of ways to roll for the dice, uh, right now there, there's that uh, key word and that phrase called uh, etc. Uh, you don't have to just uh, prob a, a hit into a miss or a miss into a hit or a, a, a failed breakaway or a successful breakaway. You can also prob a hit into a hit as long as dice have been re-rolled re uh, into a different result. Uh, so uh, it could be a mess into a mess, a hit into a hit, a failed breakaway into a failed breakaway, as long as the right result is different from the original result, uh, and, uh, then you get a mission point. And uh, I honestly want to ban Uatu because uh, from, a, from a builder perspective, uh, I could probably get uh, halfway to 20 points before your first turn. Yeah. Okay, that would be that would be um, pretty insane if you could do if you definitely could do that. I'm sure people are going to find ways of doing that. I'm not sure. Uh, are you sure that's true though? That 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 um, if you prob it like a, a let's say you prob an eight into a nine, you get a you get a mission point. Uh, well, it's the keyword etc. Uh, right now, there's arguments between uh, the HeroClix rules chat, and that's. Another fun thing about HeroClix, Matt, I don't know if you got to experience it yet, but arguing about the rules <laughs> is half the fun of the game. Uh, so, I have not experienced it yet, but I, yeah, I think I'm going to start looking at you it should now. Join, you should join HeroClix rules chat. Uh, it's uh, it's quite interesting watching what goes on, on down there. <laughs> uh, there. There were three people. Uh, I had a rules uh, issue come up uh, Friday night. Uh, if you don't mind me sharing about it, because it's a little bit long, okay. uh, just a couple of minutes. Uh, but uh, I had a rules. I, I'm pretty good about the rules. You know, I know most of them pretty well. But uh, sometimes I get confused about certain interactions, you know. Uh, and so if I got confused about it, then I, I need to go to somebody else and see. And I go to uh, Jay Solomon, uh, Joe P. Grazio, and Gilbert Miller uh, for the Hero Quicks Rules Chat group. Now, these guys know the rules a lot better than I do. And uh, when I reached out to them, uh, there, was, uh, there was a debate. And that's, that's interesting to say because usually they're all on the same page. So if the, all three of them are debating on how this rules interaction was working, then, then I, I shouldn't feel so bad. Uh, but uh, it had to do with Battle Fury and Shape Change. Uh, and they went to go. Uh, from the XDPS set, which is uh, that set 
is the best set, Matt. If you can invest in that at all, go for it. You gotta have a lot of fun. Which um, set? Uh, X-Men the animated X-Men. series. Yeah. X-Men animated series, great set. Uh, a lot of stuff in there from uh, commons to rares that you would enjoy playing with. And from a, uh, if you like watching cartoon growing up, great I set. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, so the, the, uh, the request from was, uh, when they go, uh, tried to attack a character that had ship change. And then uh, because of Wendigo's powers, where if he moves, he can attack after uh, actions resolve. Uh, so he uh, uh, he has still energy. So he moved, he made the attack, he uh, and got ship change against. And so he had to attack something else and heal. Uh, and then he uh, had Battle Fury on the next click. And so uh, the Wendigo wanted to attack the ship change character again. Uh, with the, with the, the wording of shape change, I wasn't sure because it said uh, if you make a shape change roll, uh, you cannot be targeted uh, this turn again uh, for the rest of the turn. And Battle Fury says they can't use shape change. Mm, I see. And uh, I was trying to uh, look at uh, what Battle Fury says and what Outwit says, uh, where it says can't use. Uh, if you were to outwit shape change uh, against a character that uh, already made a successful shape change roll, you can already you can attack them again afterwards. And so with uh, Battle Fury, my initial reaction was they can't use shape change, and so uh, he can go ahead and attack the character that already successfully rolled the shape change roll. And uh, I was unsure about that because it, it, it was just such a weird interaction. And uh, uh, turns out uh, after a half hour debate between them uh, that I was right. Um, that they all finally got on the same page. Well, Flurry, Flurry has those kind of weird interactions because it's kind of like two attacks in one resolution, right? Like it's, uh, yeah. And, uh, uh, well, go, like, okay. like, can, like if I'm attacking, I'm not 100% sure on this. Um, let's say I attack a Mystics character with Flurry. Do I take two damage or do I take one? Uh, you would take two because uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. uh, uh, when you dealt this character uh, damage, uh, de- uh, deal them uh, one uh, unavoidable uh, or when penetrating uh, after actions resolve. So then after resolutions, you would take two. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, uh, but that's a pretty confusing thing, right, Matt? Uh, yeah. Uh, I was like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question, though. Like, what happens? Uh, yeah, they, they, they gave me a, a laundry list of why it, why it worked, and uh, I don't want to go into the minutia, but because uh, the story is already pretty long as it is, but yeah, uh, uh, that's the that's the thing that WizKids is trying to fix. They're trying to dumb it down or simplify it to where uh, it, it shouldn't have to be thought about. It should be just bam. Like uh, yeah. when Tony just asked me about Flurry Mystics. It should be just that easy and instantaneous uh, as to what the answer should be. Right. Um, yeah. And then legacy cards. What do you guys think about legacy cards? I don't have any of the old pieces like that, so. Would you go hunting for them? Um, oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Would I go hunting for them? Yeah, if I thought that one of them was really good, I'd, I'd go hunting for them. Have you looked at any of them and uh, of any of the, uh, like, the what their stats are and thought that they were good or not or I'll, I can show you a couple so here is um, let's take a look at the here's Morgan Le Fay which I this one caught my eye uh, she's won worlds uh, and nationals a few times so she she's... has really okay. yeah see I wasn't around for any of these figures when they were out actually but I don't know how they changed this figure. It looks like they gave her a fifty-point line. Did they? Was she always had? Did she always have a fifty-point line? Uh, I want to say she only had a, a static one-point line. So I'm get. I don't. I, I'm almost hundred percent sure she did not have a fifty-point line. And so, um, and and also, was this always a trait uh, where she could make Avengers and Latveria a single? Uh, Definitely not. Uh, she what she did was uh, she had a special perplex that would target uh, adventurous keywords by plus two and minus two. Okay, 
All right, so it looks like they changed her so that she makes Avengers and Latveria able to be um, keyworded together, um, which is interesting. I mean, I would maybe play her at 50 points, but she's got a 16 defense at 50 points. Uh, does she have Mastermind? or? So she has Prob, and then she has... Um, the defense power is toughness, and you can free choose combat reflexes or energy shield deflection. Okay. Yeah, uh, for the pieces back then, the defense values were not good, uh, and that that could make for some really easy games. Uh, so that 16 defense is uh, manageable, but I mean, at 50 points, you know, uh, you could just build around her, and she'd, she'd be perfectly fine. And she's got the left variant keyword, so... Uh, you can also pair her up with the uh, Latvian village uh, the map, or uh, you know, for zero points, I believe that's what it costs. And I'd get her mastermind. Yeah, she didn't have two lines. She does now. I'm I'm looking I'm looking at it. So this one stood out to me as being like one of the better ones. Um, a lot of people are talking about thing. Yes, thing is the one that uh, you should try to get your your hands on that if you can. I heard that about thing. I'll... So thing is, but even even though, so I think yeah, I would I would probably go out and get this one too. But for 140 points, yeah, he he does like endless amount of attacks. So that's the thing, Matt, with with uh, the thing here. Not I mean, no pun intended. The thing with the thing <laughs> is uh, is that he has size up and close combat. Oh, he has close combat expert. Oh, that yeah. makes him that makes him better. Eleven for five. Oh, so 11 for 5. Okay, so now his attack values go up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I want to get him. Yeah. Okay, and uh, because he's an older piece, uh, you know, that's the, the downside of your clicks. I don't know if you got to experience that yet, Matt. Uh, uh, but uh, once pieces rotate out, their value goes down by like half or more. Uh, so right now, that thing, if you can get it, uh, it could be anywhere from 5 to $10. Uh, and but once this comes out, it could be uh, twenty to thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Because what he does is, uh, when when an opposing character takes damage from things close attack, so if he hits and deals damage after resolutions, you can make another close attack targeting that character. So every time he hits and, and damages somebody, he can make another attack, mm -hmm. and that can just activate forever as long as you keep hitting so you know you i mean you perplex up his attack really high um or something like that and you know perplex you up their attack and plucks down the defense and you probably will never miss yeah so that's really good actually that's really good for 140 points now with the close combat expert i think and uh think also awesome. with the new rules uh oh, he's only got one bolt but you know you can fix that with one of the rings where you can get an additional bolt yeah you, uh, could, you could even put reality gem on him yeah, get another bolt and start dishing out that damage to a lot of characters. So yeah, for, for me, the, the design aspect of it is, uh, it, this is what's so hard about playing uh, casual formats outside of 300 Modern, uh, where no matter what kind of restrictions you want to try to limit the game, I, 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 I can work around it, you know? You can make a Kerr, you can make a Highlander, you can make it 50 points or less, uh, or you can only make it close combat. And uh, that's, uh, it doesn't matter what uh, Whiz Kicks does to the game. Uh, the, the good players will figure it out and uh, the new players will benefit from it. So, so now my question is just with the legacy cards, it can be anything from the older one or it has to be one specific thing? Uh, that specific thing. Oh. Yeah, uh, it, it's uh, that specific thing. You match up the card with the set number uh, of that thing. Nice. Okay. And so what is, um, Matt, have you on, taken a look at any of the previews for the Doom Chases, the Chases from the Future Foundation? Yeah, I'm going to have to get all of them. <laughs> What's your favorite? Yeah. Which one, what, what is both of your favorites Doom Chase? I'll, I'll take, let's share the screen again and we'll look at some of the chases. Um... I'll look at. I mean, the one that uh, just came, I got previewed today was Lord Doom. Somebody somebody posted that, Lord Doom. But we have Prisoner of Prisoner of Planet Doom, 
I love these names. These are great. I don't. I'm not familiar with any, a lot of these characters. Um, and uh, the pictures are not up yet. But I'm. We, we are. Oh, thank you to Clicks Nexus for using your um, database. They they have everything up so quickly. On yeah, Click that's what I'm using too. Is uh, ClicksNexus.com. I'm a. Uh... I'm gonna go ahead and say Doctor Doom, the the sorcerer. Yeah, I thought, just I thought because that's kind of funny to watch all these different different characters as the sorcerer supreme. It's like, ah. let me see if I can find a uh, picture of him. Yeah, while I do that, I'll uh, talk about the sorcerer supreme. So that the the, uh, the damage power. Once per attack you move, you roll the attack roll of the character with advantage and line of fire. So that's basically a prod. And as long as it's a different character or, uh, or a different attack, then you can keep rolling, re rolling those attack rolls. So it's uh, in a lot of ways better than prod. It, it, you know, it was because it's funny because with the absolute carnage one, the Doctor Strange one, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Uh, for me, it's uh, Valeria Von Doom. Oh, yeah, and, she, the, yeah, she looks really good. Yeah, uh, for for the points that she brings at seventy five and one fifty, uh, I, I think it's just amazing. Uh, I'd probably play her at a uh, seventy five, and uh, either do a lot various in team or I mean, she's got great keywords: mystical, ruler, scientist. Those are all three really popular keywords, uh, especially mystical. Mystical is the one that. Uh, gets used a lot. The scientist is my personal favorite. Oh yeah, scientist is going to be great in this set for sure. Um, she's got mystical ruler. She's got ruler and Liberia, which means you could play a bunch of uh, doom bots and they can kind of um, be her bodyguard while, on Re your team. Re remember when you sent me that text, what was the first thing I said? I was like, wait, can I use doom bots with these guys? <laughs> you definitely <laughs> and you can. were like, Ah, uh, now you're starting to think. As long as they have yeah. Liberia and Ruler, that you can you can use the Doom bots, and also she has not only that she has so she has shape change that succeeds on a four through six, and you don't want to really attack her because if she hits her shape change, she deals you damage, or yeah. or I she mean, could run away a little bit. And wait, is it because she's mystical? If you hit her, you take a damage too. Uh, uh, no, no, she does not have mystics. She does not have the mystics. Oh, there, up there, okay. Yeah, that would no, be it's, a, it's a special role where you could deal up to uh, half the result. So you could deal anywhere from uh, two to three damage to a character that attacks her. And then she has super senses on top of that. So she has two rollouts. Um, I think it's, well, I mean, like a 25% chance that you might even hit her. because uh, and, a, and a 19 defense is pretty solid, too. Yeah. You can pair her up with uh, the scroll. So if you want to break theme, or actually, I think there's scrolls that have the scientist keyboard. So you can increase her shape change roll by one to make it a three through six. Yeah, or you could you could also give her. I mean, she only has sidestep, but you could give her um, the silver surfboard or exospecs to give her hypersonic. Mm -hmm. um, and really make her mobile. Yeah, um, you could do a lot of things with her. Oh yeah, she's a great piece, and uh, uh, that was the first one I was like, uh, I, I want to build around the uh, the Sorcerer Supreme Doctor Doom is also one of those like that's just that's just a really good piece. But I also, I mean, I also think that with her, you have to sideline some of these other ones. I mean, uh, um, and would you would you would you play her at one fifty or one or just seventy five? Uh, most likely, I'll play her uh, at seventy five, one fifty. Uh, that character has to be doing a lot to do half my force. They have to have good survivability. They have to have good attack values. They have to either shut things down and uh, be able to attack almost every other turn. And also the keywords. Uh, uh, being able to uh, get leadership off of them to make them uh, continually attack. And uh, she's got the keywords to do it, so she's not unplayable at 150. And what, uh, she's got a you could make like you can use uh i like this one too a lot doom the annihilating conqueror because he has the keyword manipulation so you can you can include like future and past or cosmic keyword yeah Any, that's the cosmic. third one yeah uh, that's uh yeah uh like matt said these are the this is a set where every chase is a chase worth getting uh and building around so uh, i think uh if you buy a brick or buy a case then uh, and also the primes, by the way. The primes, uh, this is a, a set where every prime and every chase is 
I don't think you'll feel too bad about getting a, a common prime or one of the chases that you weren't really keen on getting because they all have good point values and they all have great playability. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure about High Evolutionary. I love that character, High Evolutionary. I'm glad that they clicked him again. Um, but he's got a really good, um, I mean, that prime for 20 points, you get, you're get you getting, uh, I mean, he's good on animal theme teams. Um, oh, I love High Evolutionary. I that's, that's the prime I would like to get out of all of them. And why do you say that? Uh, his uh, his point values. Uh, I like support pieces uh, that uh, that can uh, do really janky stuff, uh, and he can do that. He can do uh, what I want, which is to shut down Vulture uh, with the the new build that people are trying to do. But the object that he comes equipped with, Isotope E. He comes. Uh, the prime comes with Isotope A. Isotope A. Um... Oh, the ice tip. Hey, okay. Uh, I thought you were talking about the prime. Yeah, the, this is the prime. The prime does this. This is the. Uh, this is what he does. Perplex, but only to target this character. When this character uses it, if this character has the animal keyword, modify the chosen value plus two instead. Um, but then the. Um, but then he he himself. Has. Uh, when he uses that effect, he may target other characters with the animal keyword. He may. Okay. No, yeah, I did look at this piece. Uh, no, I like the uh, the regular one better, but this one's actually good. He's got good attack values, uh, 40 points to 20 points, uh, and uh, good keywords. Uh, scientist, again, one of my favorites. So uh, there's a little bit of bias that goes along with it. Uh, animal. Uh, and off the top of my head, there's not a lot of great animal, animal modern key pieces. Uh, I uh, uh, I remember this piece. And I was like, this guy would go great with uh, uh, Alyosha Craven from the Amazing Spider-Man set from when I first started playing. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that piece only gets better because he no longer takes push damage. But yeah, the, the leadership, the double leadership that he gets is pretty good. Uh, the isotope A, uh, yeah, I, I just think uh, he's a great support piece. But, okay, and, so you, uh, were you were talking about high evolutionary, the um, the, the regular one. So that one. Yeah, that's what I was uh, initially talking about. So that one comes about one twenty five or thirty, and you would play him at thirty. Oh yeah, absolutely at thirty. And so at, th at thirty, he has running shot, pen sight, energy shield deflection, prob. So that's that's really good for thirty points, and he has a stop click. Um, <laughs> With invincible and super senses, that's a really good stop click. Um, and then uh, he comes with the isotope E. Oh, I, oh, and then he also. Oh, you can also keep him on your sideline and yeah, and do Th that. This is a super rare that keeps. you could just put on your sideline. And uh, with the new mechanic that they introduced, uh, captains and sidekicks, oh, uh, okay. where you get plus one to attack uh, when attacking characters with cosmic keyword. And I think Cosmic is going to try to make a, a comeback uh, mm -hmm. this set. Yeah, and then also, what does the Isotope E do? Do you like uh, the Isotope E? Or... Yes, I do. Uh, 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 it's uh, 15 points. So basically, uh, at the beginning of the game, you pick a character uh, that's on the sideline, and they can't interact with the game. At the, at the beginning of the game, you may replace a character on your starting force with the character. I'm sorry, I'm oh no, that's uh yeah. You can swap them out, swap out a character. I said, yeah, you, uh, for, for fifteen points, you can swap out a character at the same point value, and that's what people be, want to do. Be, with it. it has to be the same name, though. Same name and same point value. Yeah. Uh -huh. So a lot of people are talking about that with Vulture, I think. Yeah, that's right, and uh, I think it's Isotope A, or no, it's one of the Dooms that says uh, that you can't bring in a, a character off your sideline. Uh, and that's what, uh, you, if you want to build with Vulture, go ahead, but uh, you could be building to lose against one of these dooms. I forget which one it is, but that says that you can't bring out a character off of your sideline. But yeah, I like Isotope because that was the first reaction I had, where I was like, Vulture, Vulture, uh, 50 points, 50 points. Uh, and uh, that 50 point regular uncommon Vulture has the scientist keyword. Uh, so now I can build a plus eight, plus 11 theme team with Vulture and get my map and get my Doc Ock arms. Here's the sideline one, Dr. Thing. So 
the doctor thing. Um, you can choose a stone one of equal points on the cast from your side. Yeah, so Matt, that first trait means that if you have, let's say you have all of these chases, mm -hmm. you can keep, you can have one on your team and you can keep all the other ones on your sideline. And during, at the beginning of the game, you could just switch one out. Now, that's, I was going to ask if that's what that does, because... Okay. It's, it's like a shifting focus. Uh, it's a, similar to an old mechanic, uh, the Superman. I think it was Superman Wonder Woman that did this, uh, where basically you have all these pieces on your sideline, and you'd be able to swap out the beginning of the game to determine which one's better suited uh, to fight against your, uh, the opposing team. Oh, wow. So this guy can take can look at your the opponent's sideline and just take an element out and just be like, no, can't use it? Uh, yep. So that Vulture team that I was talking about, uh, yeah, the Dr. Thing was like, no, you can't play with him. <laughs> so yeah. that, that team that you built for uh, just uh, gets neutered, and, which is why I don't think people will 100% uh, rely on that now. I think they'll probably probably build a second or a third win condition with that team because if people don't build for that then they're probably going to lose yeah let's say jesus and then there's lord doom which just was shown today and that one he first of all he's got kind of a cool stats um this 75 point line i don't know what the 10 attack doesn't look that great but i mean he has some cool things to his his dial as well he has charge with, without having his speed. He runs through blocking and hindering. Oh um, Ending the revolution. If, if he has more characters than your force, he can't generate bystanders. That's what I was going to show you. That one. That's, that's pretty cool. That, that's that, cool. Wow. And so you keep these dooms on your sideline, and depending, it, like if your opponent has bystanders, you put that one in. If you're. Now, uh, th this is one of those pieces that you probably want to play at full just to get the full benefit. Yeah, so let's see his full wow. Yeah, because he so also... So this is what you were saying, that all the chases are good. Because you yeah. want to... Yeah, this, like, I, I can't see... Uh, unless you really want a specific Doom or a specific Prime, which uh, I would encourage you just to buy uh, outright by itself. Uh, you, can't, you, you can't be disappointed, I feel like, you know, with pulling any of these uh, Primes or chases. Right, they're all really good. Um, great keywords. Uh, not only that, I love this. I love this defense power. Invulnerable opposing characters attacking Lord Doom modify attack and damage minus one. So, if you're averaging a three damage, now you're only dealing him two damage, um, and he's got invulnerable. So you have to, you have to get creative to deal him damage. You know, unless yeah. So. I you won't feel as bad now when someone comes running shot pulse wave uh, for six damage with the new rules. Uh, now this game at 150 has uh, some good survivability. Yeah. So all right. So um. Speaking of so uh, all right. So we talked about we talked about the chases. We talked about a lot of stuff from Future, Future Foundation. Today's the Super Bowl. What do you guys think about um, Super Bowl predictions? As far as uh, the um, the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, Mahomes my, versus Brady. Uh, my my heart goes with Mahomes, but my head can't put money against Brady in a playoff game. <laughs> uh, my heart and head both go with Mahomes. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the Chiefs win by ten or more. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't think you could ever count Brady out. And no, they do, they do have a lot of good players too on on the box. They have good defense. Yeah, they have explosive defense. Uh, and they also why, the refs helping them. Uh, Mahomes, he can get uh, three scores in one quarter, no problem. So even after the first three quarters of the game, uh, they're down by I don't know uh, three scores. Uh, then I still believe that there's a chance because this kid doesn't quit, uh, and that's uh, something that a lot of hero players can learn from, is that. Uh, it could be really, really, really bad, and you still have a shot as long as you can play it out. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, uh, yeah, don't count Brady out. The, the defense is really good on that team, but you're you're right. Um, Mahomes, that team is just really explosive. 
I mean, do you do you think that's gonna be th- it, this is gonna be a high scoring game, or do you think it's gonna be like a boring low scoring game? Uh, I think it's gonna be a high scoring game just because uh, uh, both uh, offenses uh, they're gonna want to score, uh, but uh, I think the defenses uh, are gonna try to do their best to make it a low scoring game. Matt, what uh, do you I, think? Higher low scoring? I, I, it depends on the weather. Honestly, if it is gonna rain. That's going to hurt passing a lot. So you might see more running than you think. Interesting. I'll pitch Brady at disadvantage, I think. Then. Not Mahomes, though, because he can run. And yeah. don't, for, don't forget to uh, break out your Madison Stadium maps, uh, A and B. Put them together and play play a little Super Bowl scenario on here. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I should have come up with a format for today, but I just uh, totally forgot about the Super Bowl being today. Uh, just uh, I just already assumed that Mahomes was going to win, so I didn't really care about the game too much. <laughs> I'm more curious about the commercials. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, let us know in the comments um, what you're a- a- after you've watched the Super Bowl, um, or if you are going to watch the Super Bowl. Uh, let us know what your favorite commercials were in the comments or any, any other bring back the Bud Bowl or any other comments about what we talked about today. Um, and the, the last thing I wanted to ask you is, uh, I mean, I mean, I know WandaVision is coming out and, you know, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched WandaVision, um, but, but we all, um, I don't, you know, getting away from WandaVision a little bit, but also just talking in general about the MCU. Um, there's been a lot, a lot of previews about what's coming up in the MCU as far as TV shows and movies. What's like your most excited, Move. What are you most excited for to come out in the MCU coming up in the in the next year or so? Uh, you know where I'm going. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know where you're gonna go. Okay. Uh, I love the Punisher. I love everything about him, and I was so happy when they actually did the Netflix one, kind of right. And I was really pumped that they said they re- they were gonna bring it. They're gonna bring it to Disney Plus somehow. So they're working out right now how to bring it. So that that got me excited. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, aren't they bringing that whole universe, the uh, the Netflix like Daredevil, Punisher, Iron Fist, yeah. the Defenders universe. From what I understand, yeah, they're they're trying to bring them all in. Uh, yeah, I Charlie mean, Cox. I probably try to recast Iron Fist, but yeah, I'd be okay with that. All the other ones, I think they did an awesome job. Like Daredevil, what was him? They they nailed the casting on him. Iron Fist was the only one you're like, mm, maybe not. Uh, I, I liked him from uh, 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 a, a surface standpoint. I thought he looked like him, uh, but it's not the Iron Fist that I know. You know? Uh, yeah. I didn't like uh, the character building, the world building. I liked everybody but him. Well, I, I heard Charlie Cox, the guy that plays um, Daredevil, is being cast in the next Spider Man movie. Yeah, that's the rumor going around. That's the rumor. I heard that. So that's yeah, I, I love that actor. He's in uh, one of my favorite movies called Stardust. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. It's a great fun flip with Robert De Niro and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. I've never seen that movie. I always wanted to, and I did not know he was in it. So now I will definitely check that out. Yeah, he's the main character. Uh, it's, a, it's a great fantasy movie. For sure. Real, real funny. Great story. That came out a long time ago. He must have been really young in that movie. Uh, yeah, I think he came out like eight years ago. So uh, he would have been like in his early 20s or mid-20s. Uh, you, you're right, though. Like their world building it is um, like, and everyone keeps going back to the movies and you're like, you look and you're like, they put that in 10 years ago as like an Easter egg. Like the, oh, we didn't forget about it. Like everyone knows Atlantis is coming at some point because of, I think it was an Iron Man one. That's still rumored, still not done yet or anything. And they still put that in the first movie, like for them to have such a spaced out plan and executing it is is really something to be like, kudos to you. Uh, yeah. With, Are you guys uh, excited at all for DC, for the, um, the DC movies? I mean, I know oh. they're coming out with a Zack Snyder cut in- uh, I'm excited Marvel. for his cut, that's about it. Uh, I don't really care. I'll still watch it, uh, but it's uh, hard to get invested when uh, it feels uh, disjointed. There's not a lot of uh, uh, left hand knows what the right hand is doing. Yep, mm-hmm. I, I agree. I agree. I, I'm I'm a more of a Marvel guy myself, but I mean I know there's a lot of DC people, and I am getting more into DC. I think Heroclix has gotten me more into DC 
um, than I used to be because I, I was just always DC Hero Clicks. What? I have yet to buy a DC Hero Click. Well, hopefully, oh, well, hopefully you enjoy the Wonder Woman set. I, I really think it's going to be a good set, even though they're better That's powers. A, yeah, a great set. Uh, if Even if you don't like DC too much, Matt, you should invest in getting at least all the objects that come along with it. Uh, objects bring a lot of variety and uh, can help uh, with your team building. Every time you uh, think about a character, you're like, okay, he would go get with this object. He would go get with that object. She would do the wonderful with this object, you know? And it, it, behoo it behooves you to get the starter pack um, for Wonder Woman because they're going to have the new powers and abilities card with all the new rules, and uh, they'll have the new rule book, yeah. and uh, those pieces will be easy to uh, learn. You know, I do. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. No, Definitely will. buy that starter set. It'll be uh, 50 bucks, I think. Uh, but it'll be worth the investment just for the, the maps and the rule book alone. All right, guys. So thank every thank you, Matt, and thank you, Brad, for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, can't wait to sit back and relax and watch the Super Bowl, and also um, can't wait for the next HeroClix updates and WizKids updates for HeroClix rules changes uh, to come. Um, I wanted to also just shout out um, to Jay Solomon because I know he's running a tournament. I think everybody should go and join, which is a Future Foundation sealed tournament. And it is a charity tournament for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, a very important cause. Um, and um, he's, I mean, you should check check his podcast out and his Facebook page out, JSA Clicks, um, for more information on how to sign up for that tournament, which should be starting sometime in March. So, um, and, uh, and, uh, the future foundation, it's going to be a fun tournament because it's sealed with, um, I think he's deciding on using the future foundation set for, for that. So if you don't have an opportunity to play with that set, this, this is a good opportunity to play online using that set. And uh, if anyone needs any help uh, playing World 20 online, I have a tutorial video, and I'd be more than happy to walk you through it to get more experience. Yes, and don't forget to follow um, the Bradcast show on Discord. He has a, and on Facebook, he has a uh, Discord server where he does um, cash tournaments and lots of other things. He he uh, uh, Brad runs it, and he he creates a lot of uh, tokens to, for use on Roll Twenty, and uh, he does a lot of other stuff for the community. So. Check, check his site out as well. So, um, all right. Thank you, guys. And don't forget, wake up and smell the clicks. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.